Now, let's meet two of the most exciting singer-songwriters in country music today, Gary Stewart and Dean Dillon. Hi, my name is Dean Dillon, and I was born in Lake City, Tennessee, March 26, 1955. I'm 27 years old, and I got just the meanest blue eyes you've ever seen. And I'm 5'9", and on a good day, I weigh 145 pounds. And my chosen profession is songwriting. And my name is Gary Stewart, and I was born May 28, 1944. And um, I write songs and sing them, and have recorded a few here with Mr. Dillon. You two really haven't known each other for very long. Why do you think you write so well together? We grew up the same background, uh, and you know, same lifestyles. And then later on in life, when we left uh, the mountains, even though we weren't together, we went down just about say the same street, the same highway, same you know crazy avenue. And we clicked right off the bat because of just what he said. You know, we did, our lifestyles were virtually the same growing up, and when we first met. Uh, that's why it was an automatic closeness. Because you come from similar backgrounds, writing the title song for this album, Those Were the Days, must have come pretty easily for you both. Those Were the Days, yeah, it came pretty quick. Yeah, we, you know, we related to everything about the song. When we were writing most of our songs, because of our background, being brought up virtually the same, our um, minds are on are on the, the same wavelength all the time, so that's why we write so well together. And we wrote those for the days in a car going to uh, play a date. I had a guitar in the car, just started strumming off and knocked it off in about an hour, I wrote it, finished it. When did you start writing together? We actually got together to write the first time at the Spence Manor Hotel here in Nashville. Now that time we wrote three songs that was on the Brotherly Love album, the one before this album here. We came up with what? Brotherly Love and Firewater Friends. Firewater Friends. And we wrote another song. Uh, which I, which yeah, one another Which song one of you is the one to get things started? Who comes up with the ideas? So I think Dean, Dean's the innovator. He kind of, you know, he's as far as all maybe, the time. Maybe so far as the song that goes, but when it comes to the studio, uh, Gary said, so high keyed in his singing, you know, he's so intense into it that uh, it tends to spark me a lot of time. Is Gary a hard singer to harmonize with? Gary, I hate to say this, but very. <laughs> yes, really. He never sings in the same way twice. And you just have to watch him and guess most of the time. <laughs> yeah, you gotta have eye to eye, cause uh, I put my soul in it, I guess, and it takes over and it takes my voice to where it wants to go. Yeah, well, I've noticed the way that Gary sings each time he does sing a song. When we're playing our tours, we just do part of the show together. Mm -hmm. And I watch him and he, he gets in. Each song is like a different aspect or a different phase of his soulfulness, man. And each one is sung differently, you know, on a different level. And he and that's what makes it so hard to sing with him because, you know, you don't... He doesn't phrase mm -hmm. the same way. Right. But on this album, The Cut Lovers and Losers, you two sing exactly together, note for note. Very reminiscent of the Everly Brothers kind of thing. Well, we um, kind of had that intention. Yeah, you know, really. On that particular song, uh, not that we were trying to copy it, you know, but uh, because it's a good harmony song, we did want to get the, uh, that sound of the yeah, Everly Brothers. The tide yeah, influence yeah. and the... Smoking in the Rockies is really a hot rock and roll cut. Have either of you two played a lot of rock in the past? Uh, Gary, I know you've cut some with uh, some of the southern rock bands. Yeah, I've, I've played um, country, and I've played pop, you know, with pop bands, rock, anything uh, to make a living. And so, I've, yeah, I've played a lot of rock. They're all my brothers. Greg and Nicky sang and played on my last album I did. Captain Rose. 
man, music was not that varied back in my high school years. I would listen to a little bit of it. Not much because Merle Haggard Man was always my main source of a soulfulness. That's what got me hooked on country music. And I've always been that way ever since. As songwriters, I think you two guys are to his best. Your lyrics have an almost poetic quality about them. I, I think uh, the poetic part of it, uh, well, all of it, comes from the good Lord above. You know, God gives you the tools to use to do what you would do best. And I think our chosen profession, Gary and I both, was music. And uh, that's where we got our uh, ability was from the Lord, you know. Well, Gary, what comes first in your life? Friendship? Music? I mean, above all else. Uh, friendship over all else, not music over all else. I guess if you put it in the top five things in my life, God comes first and music comes second. That's the way mine is. But I imagine one of these days that music maybe might slip a number or two <laughs> when I get older. <laughs> it's obvious that you two have become real close friends. We watch out for one another. We really do care what there's a lot of love between the two of us. So we do watch out for each other. And, you know, we have our little squabbles, but uh, that the reason we do nine times out of ten is we're concerned about that. You know, if he gets down, I'll try to drag him on. And if, if he get, falls around, okay. it's my turn to pick up, you know. And that's the way we are. Title of the first album, Brotherly Love. We're like brothers. Well, you know, you've been called rebels, renegades, honky-tonk kings. Uh, do you really feel like a couple of misfits, like your song says? Oh, yeah. I think we all like to think that we're rebels, you know. Um, got a little bit of hell raising in ourselves. We are individualists. And we're not your normal run-of-the-mill artist songwriters because uh, we're very outspoken about a lot of things and we don't fit in and you know we have been uh, talked about and said wow they're awful strange well maybe we are I guess we are misfits in some places but our music's not I think our music fits in everywhere Dean I know that you admire Merle Haggard a lot oh yeah man because he, uh, he sang songs about my life you know, I could relate to everything he was came out with. Mm -hmm. Mama's hungry eyes. I saw my mama's hungry eyes. From now on, all my friends are going to be strangers. I'm off to ever trusting anyone. Sure, I can relate to that. What about you, Gary? I know you've been a great fan of Jerry Lee Lewis. Oh yeah. How, how much influence did he have on your music? Oh really? Yeah. I found the piano and uh, try to sound like Jerry Lee, and which uh, all singers have influences when they are learning and you know growing up we all uh, have our idols and sing their songs and, and yeah. Jerry Lee was one of mine. Not just coming off the wall of this but when I first heard Gary you know I started listening to his music. I've always dug his music and it was you know a great honor to get with him and record with him and fortunately it went a step farther and right with him. Well, I know that you work very hard on this particular album. So tell me, uh, what are your feelings about it now that it's finished? Those six songs you hear on this album are the best that I've ever had part of in writing in my life. And we got our stuff together and we really prepared for this album because we want it, you know, to be the, the best that we can possibly give, which is what I think it is. We were fortunate in having a great producer, Blake Mevis. Uh, he done an excellent job, I think, and we got it together, and here's what it is.